Ah, so part 10, and I've got the part right this time of the e-liquid log database recipe thing. So where have we got to last time? Ah, uh, yeah, this is going to be a quick one. Uh, the cold I have is taking grip. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be a quick one, but got to get something done, otherwise it's going to take forever. So this is where we got to last time. We have our control panel where we can click this button to create a new ingredient and we can click this button to create a new recipe. What we wanted to add was a possibility or a way for us to select a recipe and go to that recipe. So if we have a little look at our notes, you can see this is where we got to. And this is what we can do now. We can add an option to view a recipe. So what we're going to need is a drop down with a list of recipes and some kind of button to open that recipe once we've selected it. So the first things first, let's go into the design view and let's create uh, just a drop down for a minute. And yeah, actually we do want to use the wizard in this case. We'll get the contents from the recipes table and we will want the ID, yes, and the name, yes. Uh, as opposed to before where we're only actually interested in certain text fields. In this case, we do want to get the recipe ID so we can open the specific recipe by its ID. So we'll need those two, select next, and we will sort them by the recipe name ascending. And we'll hide the key column. We don't need to see the ID, but we do need to use its value. But yeah, it can be hidden. And we're going to call it, what should we call it? Recipe drop, oops, down. So let's just move that over here. And actually, I think that this isn't really working properly when when Access asks you to name it. I think it's just giving you, uh, just putting whatever you put in as the name into the label. I don't think it's correctly naming it, no. So let's change this to recipe drop down. And actually, we don't really need that label, so we'll delete it. And let's have a look at what we've got in terms of data. If we select that, and we'll be able to open up the query that the wizard created for us. And you can see in the first column, we've got the recipe ID. In the second column, we've got the recipe name. This one is being hidden. This one isn't being shown at all. It's just being used to sort it ascending. Again, we could have done this manually and we could have done it differently manually, but this is the way that Access does it. It saves time, um, so we'll just leave it. Um, and what we want to do is we'll leave this unbound. We don't need to save this anywhere in a database. It is literally for us to just pick up um, our list of recipes and enable us to open one. So the other thing we're going to need here is a button. So we'll make a little button. And we'll cancel that because we'll do the coding ourselves. We'll go into the caption and change it to open recipe as opposed to open sesame. <laughs> it doesn't quite fit on there. So let's, uh, let's resize the button so it does all fit. Um, let's change the name of it to something a bit more logical like open a recipe button. And then if we view this, we will now have all of our recipes here, all of one. That is the only one we've created so far. So we could select that and we click the open recipe button and nothing's happened. Well, yeah, not surprising. We haven't actually put any event handler on the click for this button yet. So let's go back into design view click on the open recipe button, click on event, click on the on click event and do code builder. And here we are in the VBA coding window. So essentially what we're going to do is something very similar to these other two here. We're going to open the recipe form, in fact very similar to this one. We're going to open the recipe form 
but instead of just opening it we're going to tell it via a sort of mm, shortened sql query what we want to do when it's opened and in fact it's going to do this as a filter but that's by the by so if we just copy this bit here because essentially we're doing the same thing and stick a comma in we will specify to whom it is normal and then we will stick some commas in until we get to this where condition which is here so we're now on the where condition and this is just a text so that'll do we'll get rid of that so that's just a, a little bit of text we're going to put in there which actually sort of takes the form of a kind of simplified sql query so what we'll do is we want to open the form so that it shows the recipe id that we selected in our um, combo box but for now we'll just put two we'll close that down we'll close this we'll run it and if we click that button it's going to open on recipe id 2 which actually is the only recipe in there the vanilla custard so that bit's working but that's got nothing to do with this here so let's go back into design view let's click on this what do we call it again we called it a recipe drop down and we know that the value of this is going to be the recipe id because that is what it's stating in here you can see the first column is a recipe id and in here the bound column which is what the value has been taken from is column one so it's id so let's go back in here let's click and go back to the on click event handler and let's take away that too and then let's add in and recipe drop down value there so that's that kind of we need to kind of protect ourselves from some issues here for example if we hadn't selected anything and it was blank and we did this well there's going to be problems so we're going to surround this by a little if statement and do some tests on the value just to make sure that uh, it is kind of hopefully a valid recipe id and when we click the button it will open and won't give us any errors so the first thing we'll check for is that it is a number so we do that and we'll just oh yeah access always does that it's so annoying actually i think all vba does it if you don't finish off a line and you move somewhere else it throws an error anyway so if the value in the drop down is a number basically and not is null the drop down value then do this and end if so basically if the value in the drop down is a number and it isn't null right then do that so hopefully that should cover some issues what we'll do is rather than it just doing nothing if it is null for example we'll put in else here and we'll just throw up a message box Box, message box saying can't open that recipe so if there if it is null or it isn't a number for some particularly bizarre reason then it won't go and try and open the form because that just wouldn't work but it's just going to pop up a little box saying can't open that recipe and uh, when that happens we scratch our heads and wonder why but hopefully it should not happen so we'll close this down and we shall run the old form and it, well we've only got vanilla custard but we can click on open recipe it's opened it so that hasn't really tested anything what we'll need to do is add a new recipe so let's add a new recipe and call it um i don't know let's call it buzzkill our new recipe uh, 0.3 percent nick we'll make it a 70 30 and we'll call it testing the recipe drop down 
and we'll give it an ingredient of what should we give it apple fuji and let's give it 15 percent of apple fuji and that's about it we'll cancel that and when we go into here this has to reload to get the new data but we can fix that later so now we have two recipes here so if we click on vanilla custard and open recipe it goes to vanilla custard if we close it and we click on buzzkill and open recipe it goes to buzzkill so yeah that is enough for today we have sort of kind of done what we need to do with the control panel for now watching paint dry would be more interesting